All right. I have rebooted. <laughs> I have rebooted. I have rebooted. We're going to find out if this actually is, um, is, is going to continue working for me or whether I'm going to have to apologize a second time before the day is out. See, this is why, this is why doing this without a net is really, really scary. Okay. Can everybody hear me still? Okay. I'm going to assume that you can all still hear me. Um, and if you can't hear me, please let me know. This would be a good time to let me know. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the CD that I started with, okay? And uh, what I've got installed here, I've got a program called Asunder, but I actually wanted to show you K3B as well because K3B people tend to think of as a, oh, you know what? This is going to be really interesting. This is going to be where I find out whether or not K3B is what messed everything up. Please insert an audio CD. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Interesting, interesting. Um, by the way, as I did mention, this is actually Fedora 28. So if you're looking at the side of my screen here, this is actually Fedora 28. And uh, I did upgrade it from Fedora 27. And of course, I've been updating it on a daily basis. So perhaps this was actually not the wisest move I've ever made in my life. But anyway, so Asunder, unlike, I mean, K3B uh, is the one I wanted to show you at the beginning because it's included with desktops uh, that are running... Um, that are running KDE. The other one that's actually kind of interesting is Sound Juicer, which is um, typically thought of, could not find any CD-ROMs to read. This is fascinating. This is fascinating. Okay. All right. I think we are starting to figure out what's going on here. So in preferences, I've made the folder that this is going to go into the music folder anyway. So let's see if it actually rips at this point. All right. We're going to find out if this actually works uh, because it is already in the CD drive. I fired up K3B and it has died with K3B. So I think, I think playing without the net here, I've discovered a huge problem with K3B on uh, Fedora 28. Somebody's going to have to report a bug on this. Is it going to be me? Hmm. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be me. It looks like I'm the one who's going to be re reporting this. All right, you know what? Because this is obviously not going to work for me at the moment. See, I can't even cancel this. Look at this. I cannot even cancel this. This thing is dead, dead, dead. Let's do a control alt escape and see if I can kill it this way. Wow. Wow, this is kind of amazing. This is really kind of amazing. Hmm. Let me see here. Um, ASUN, let's go back to the CD ripper that I was using there, Asunder. And no, it has completely lost track of it. And I don't recall that there was actually any kind of an error that would have let me know about that. DMESG, um, PC bus server error. Ah, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Let's just uh, let's just go to the stuff. PCI report, corrected error received. Data link layer. Ba -ba -ba -ba. And this happened when I fired up K3B. This happened exactly when I fired up K3B. Can I just rescan the? Do I... <laughs> yes, it's debugging time. Uh, Mountaineer, Br Mountaineer, Braz online. You're absolutely correct. It's debugging time. So this is actually what's happening. Um, let me see. Um, How can we? Um, he's thinking out loud. He's thinking out loud. I wonder if it's possible for me just to. Hmm. I don't have to reboot every single time on this. This is crazy. Um, what if I do an LSPCI dash D? LSP. Sorry, SPC. Sorry, LSPCI dash D. Um, oops. sudo dash i lspci dash d and um, Let's take a look at this. Grep dash I DVD. Grep dash I DVD. Oops. 
not S DVD, DVD. No. How about CD? No. No, it's like it's gone. It's completely gone. Is there a way? Hmm. I have no idea other than rebooting again, which is really, really bad. Um, what I think I'm going to do, what I think I'm going to do, because I don't want to not be able to do this, obviously, but I didn't realize that something would totally blow away my device configuration like that. Again, problem with doing this live. This is scary. Um, LSBLK, LSBLK, I just, LSBLK, uh, I do not see, I only see SDA, I do not see the uh, CD-ROM drive. Hmm, there's nothing there, there's nothing there, it has just vanished. Um, I'm not sure that it would sit on the SATA bus, would it? Because it's just a, it's it's a regular uh, it's a regular CD on this thing. So, hmm. Is there a way just to re uh, to restart to just do a restart on scan? But that's actually, I mean, we are dealing with a. Um, sorry, let me go back to DMESG here for a second and take a look. This looks sorry. This looks terribly like a um, DMESG tail minus twenty or so. There we go. Um, the, I mean, we've got some kind of a kernel error here, so we are losing it completely. Uh, we're losing access to this completely. Short version, short version, just so that, you know, I may have to go back on this at some point here. No, nothing, nothing. So we can't actually even fire up the tool um, to be able to take a look at it. All right, so I'm going to shut this down. I'm going to do the latest updates. And in fact, hey, let's do this right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the DNF update on, um, on all of the packages that have been added to Fedora 28 since this stuff was installed. And um, I'll just let this thing download and install. Skipped because some of them obviously were in there. Drink a little sip of my wine. And I'm just going to let this thing install. And when this thing has finished installing, I'm going to have to reboot and uh, check this out again. So what my plan is at the moment is that when this is finished, which is uh, going to be in, uh, well, hopefully not too terribly long, uh, I'm going to reboot one more time and see whether or not this is actually fixed. I can honestly say that I have never actually encountered this before, as in, I've never been, I mean, I run, um, I run development versions, I guess is a good way to put it, uh, of different operating systems constantly. I mean, I'm always running betas. I typically don't run alphas, uh, but I'm always running betas. And um, yeah, key import is successfully. Just go ahead and do it. Um, and I've never had like a major device failure after the fact, you know, where something just disappears from the system like that. So this is actually just a little bit on the freaky side for me uh, because this typically does not happen. So, so it's a fedora, geez. <laughs> there it is, there it is. It's letting me down, it's letting me down. All right, let me go back to... Let me see. Is there some other kind of a command that we can use that will actually force a rescan on the hardware bus? Um, let's do that. Is there a command that can do that? Ta -da -ta -da -ta -da. Um, is there such a thing? Is there a way to rescan the bus? Um, LSPCI, even if we are talking about SATA at this point, is there a way to rescan the bus? Um, According to this, if you want to force a rescan on the SCSI bus, each SATA port shows as a SCSI bus. All right, let's take a look. Let's find out if that actually is true, if that can actually work. So we're going to do this and see if it actually works. So whoops, um, su-do-i. Again, I know I'm... And Googling, Googling, I've got something on server fault here that says that I can force a rescan uh, on the bus. And let's see if that actually works. 
This is actually just a teensy, teensy bit scary, but uh, I'm willing to give it a try. Hmm. Let's see here. Um, like I said, there's a, there's an echo on scan. So uh, ls slash sys slash um, class slash scsi um, host slash host. Um, Do we have anything in there? We've got host zero, host one, host hero, host one, and um, slash scan, really. Echo, zero is the bus number. Hmm. Is, is somebody gonna tell me whether I'm doing something that could be really terrible here? All right, echo is zero, 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 zero. Uh, greater than, uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. and we're going to rescan the bus and see what happens here. Um, host one rescan. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Did you see that? <laughs> ah, did you see that? That is so cool. That is so cool. It just popped up all of a sudden. The audio CD has returned all right so so check out this line here echo double quote zero space zero space zero double quote greater than sys class scuzzy underscore host slash host one slash a scan and i did this obviously from the root prompt and uh, miraculously magically the audio cd has reappeared three actions for this host extract audio with k3b i'm terrified of doing this i'm not going to do this right now but let's see what happens if we try up sound juicer just for fun here sound juicer sound juicer is working it's coming up it's coming up let's see if it actually shows me the cds but it did actually come up all right where's my disc disc reread all right, the disc is spinning, retrieving track listing. Please wait. That is kind of cool. Okay, all right. So let's say that we just, uh, let's not do everything in here. Let's go, uh, we're gonna skip. We're gonna do just a little. We're gonna do doing it right, obviously. I'm only making sure that I've got a couple of things. Uh, thirsty ears, obviously. Gotta have thirsty ears there. Uh, personal manager, we'll take that one out. Doing it right, obviously. Um, Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. We're going to take off all of the ones that all of these guys. That, there we go. So we've got just a couple here. And I'm going to say extract. And we are going to let this go. There we go. All right. So this is actually working. This is actually. So there's the line, folks. There's the line to rescan the SCSI bus. That is so cool. All right. And I didn't have to reboot. But obviously, there's still a problem. <laughs> It's not. Right, let me have a sip of wine here. Uh, I may have to drink the whole bottle before this is done here. Meanwhile, over here, we still have we still have all these uh, files being loaded, but we were able to rescan this thing. So, okay, estimated time: one minute forty six seconds. Um, and uh, where is uh, what are my sun juicer preferences? Where am I? storing in here i am actually going into the music folder all right so i am actually going into the music folder here so if i go cd slash home i know i know i'm actually uh, i better not do that as root here uh, ta -dun, ta -dun. actually let's just open up a um let's just open up dolphin and we're going to go into the music folder there we go there we go and um is this is this the one yeah this is a Bopping with the blues dot og. All right, so let's go to sound user for a second. We're going to take a look at the preferences. Um, and og vorbis is the default. FLAC, uh, MPEG-4 audio, MPEG-3. So we can do MP3s on there. And that's because I went and installed the lame uh, libraries to make sure that that could actually happen. So estimated time, 41 seconds. And then, of course, we're going to want to uh, play this now. It worked, it worked. Somebody give the man a cookie. Give the man a cookie for figuring out how to scan the, actually no, 
No, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Where did I see this? Um, how to detect, where did I see this? Where did I see this? Um, it was on server fault, server fault questions. The question that somebody had was how do I make Linux recognize a new SATA drive I hot swapped in without rebooting? That is the question. Let me see if I can find that for you here. Um, serverfault.com, let me see, serverfault.com. And let me see if I can find that one. What can I find that one? How do I make Linux recognize a new SATA drive? Uh, how do I make Linux recognize a new SATA drive? There we go. There we go, there we go. Okay, credit where credit is due. I will put this in the show notes that goes along with it, but this is where I located the silly thing. Scroll down here and somebody points it out right there. There it is, see? There it is, there it is. All right, so now I've got my three songs, doing it right, let's go with doing it right. And we're gonna click that and because of course it was made with Sound Juicer, Sound Juicer automatically pops up um, sorry, automate, automatically pops up the uh, the um, Gnomish application for doing this. Okay, so we've got the Gnomish application. Now, if we go into multimedia, applications, multimedia, I've got a whole pile of sound players that are in here, all right? This is obviously Rhythmbox. This is actually the, uh, the uh, Gnome version. I keep wanting to say KDE version, but it's the Gnome version of the music player. This is the one that's there. And uh, if I go over into um, the KDE version, I've got Amarok. And again, Amarok is coming up with uh, basically nothing at the moment. And um, let me see, music, powder blues. And it's, it's showing me nothing at the moment because, um, um, all right, let's play that bopping with the blues. There we go. And this is Amarok as opposed to, so we have been able to get that one as well. Now, I did show you Sound Juicer. Oddly enough, I'm not gonna fire up K3B. <laughs> Oddly enough, he says. I'm not gonna fire up K3B because that obviously broke the system. It broke the system. But um, those are my options, or actually, I mean, just a couple of the options, but a couple of the options for playing music. Doing it right, let's do doing it right on, um, on that one there. I actually think, honestly, uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with Rhythm Box but Amarok is just beautiful. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous, beautiful. And it has been my go-to music player for God, I don't know how long when I'm doing local content. And uh, as I said, I actually just cleared out my, um, my music folder so that I could actually do this live with you guys here. So, okay, so let me close up Sound Juicer. Let me close up Sound Juicer and we are going to go with what is actually one of my favorite CD Ripper applications ever. And um, it's this one, it still works, it still works. So if I don't fire up K3B, I don't kill it. I don't get, you know, actually I'm gonna try firing up K3B one more time before this is over, because I actually wanna know whether I am killing it or not. <laughs> um, all right, so let's uncheck, uh, let, let me just uncheck everything on here. I'm gonna do sound juicer and I'm just gonna do uh, a couple of what I've been drinking. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one for this. Uh, that's a good one for this show, given everything that's happened so far. Um, everything that's happened so far. Um, by the way, did everybody who's on right now, and I know I've got like five people on at the moment watching at this very moment, did you all know how to do this this SATA rescan thing? Because if you did and you didn't tell me and you just wanted to see how long it would take me to collapse under the emotional weight of having this not working, you're mean, you're terribly mean. All right, so let me go to preferences here and I'm gonna go to encode preferences and uh, I'm not, uh, I'm gonna go for MP3. Okay, we're gonna do MP3. I'm gonna turn off uh, Og Forbit, uh, Og Vorbis, Og Forbis. <laughs> Oh, dude, man, you're having a tough time today. All right, so I've got two songs there, and I'm going to let her rip. Get it? Let her rip. Get it? Oh, never mind. Man, tough crowd today. Tough crowd. All right, let's put Amarok off to the side. Let's go back and watch the progress of this working. That was a new one for you. All right, at least somebody out there admitted that they didn't know how to rescan a SCSI bus, because <laughs> I sure as heck didn't. Panic, panic. Anyway, let me have my wine. 
You know, I swear I'm drinking this faster than I normally do. <laughs> Panic will do that to you. All right, total progress, 66%. This is so exciting. This is so exciting. 58, six, and two files created successfully, which means um, if I go back to Amarok here, actually what I could do is just go um, update collection, go back to my collection and local music, Powder Blues, 1990. And um, was it actually update collection? 1990. Powder Blues Band, see, it's got them in different folders. It actually it actually stuck them in different folders. That's because Asunder and uh, Sound Juicer are obviously creating different folders for it. So there it is. There's the other song that I had over there. I can throw it into my playlist over here. Hear that guitar ring. And let's play it. Let's play it. I'm not letting you see it because I don't want to get in trouble for, you know, playing copyrighted music on the internet. All that sort of stuff. But <laughs> but you know, you know that it's actually working. You know that it's happening. Anyway, so there are lots of different ways, obviously, to do this. Um, heck, if you wanted to, I mean, we went down, we went down here to the uh, command line to save my proverbial bacon here. So um, another way to do this, of course, is you know, if if you want to get really, really basic, we could go to Powder Blues, and uh, there's we're gonna go first decade. There we go. And uh, I mean, I could just do something, you know, real simple like M Player Disc One O One. There you go. So we could just use something like M Player. I mean, we can get really, 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 really basic and simple, and um, and you know, just play the whole thing directly from the command line if you, if you know, if you don't want to get fancy like this. But that actually is what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you how we can rip some songs. Um, I didn't expect that I would spend the first 15, 20 minutes <laughs> trying to fix how this thing was working. And um, yeah, somebody's telling me to do a shutdown dash R now. Um, but that is a short version of uh, some of the tools that you can use. And uh, I'm going to shut these guys down because I've just uploaded or sorry, I've just updated a lot on my system here, as you can see. And uh, after a reboot, of course, I'm going to go and find out whether K3B actually kills things. Shall we try it again just for a laugh? Let's go K3B just one more time. One more time before I call this a day. Let's go to K3B and see if we have... Lo oh, well, I'll be a monkey's fish. I'll be a monkey's fish. Look at... Ah! <laughs> okay, here, see here, I thought I was going to get away with it. No, nope, no, nope, it's just dead. It's just dead. K3B is killing it. All right, we're going to do a shutdown dash R now. And uh, maybe I'll leave a, a little note in the show notes after it's all done. And I'll let you know whether K3B is actually still killing this thing. So if you're still in the chat room, just hang tight until after I reboot this thing and I'll let you know whether it's still broken, okay? <laughs> anyway, this is Marcel for today. Uh, thank you so much to Linux Journal for making this possible because uh, it is with Linux Journal that we are doing this today. And in case you don't know what Linux Journal is, how can you possibly not know what Linux Journal is, all right? Here it is, linuxjournal.com, the premier magazine of the Linux community, back rising like a phoenix. And, um, and uh, subscribe, for goodness sake, subscribe to Linux Journal's digital edition. Uh, there, is a Linux, uh, uh, there is a Linux Journal subreddit. You can hang out in the Linux Journal subreddit. There's a Linux Journal uh, IRC channel. In fact, if you wanna, let's, let's go, where's my IRC channel? Where's, oh, that's right, I rebooted, so my IRC channel is gone. Let's go into conversation. Uh, conversation. Yeah, you can go into uh, Freenode and then you can connect and just go into the uh, Linux Journal channel, uh, which is uh, Hashmark Linux Journal. It'll get there eventually. But uh, you can chat with other people um, who about all things uh, Linux and open source in the Linux Journal channel. There it is, Linux Journal channel. I know I'm not authenticated at the moment. Hang out here, ask questions, chat, shoot the you-know-what. And uh, believe it or not, there's also a Discord channel. We actually created, or at least I created, a Discord channel. If you're the sort of person who likes to hang out in uh, top decking lethal starting... Top decking lethal. That's just terrifying. There we go. Download update. Uh, there we go. We go to the Linux Journal channel. Where's the Linux Journal channel? General. There's the Linux Journal channel. If uh, you want to uh, find out what that one is, it's HTTPS Discord.ggy. There's a there's a regular link. I mean, you can you can find it. Um, and I will put that one in the show the show notes as well. 
So you can hang out in the Linux Journal uh, Discord channel if that's what you want. But otherwise, um, if there's something else you'd like me to cover on this, please let me know. You can go to uh, youtube.com slash freethinkerat-large, and that is my uh, YouTube channel, and you can subscribe there. I would really appreciate that if you did that. Uh, share with friends, family, neighbors, dogs, cats, hamsters, you name it, all that lovely stuff. And um, I'm going to end this video now. So I'm going to go over here back to our studio. Oops. See, I've, I've moved away from the camera. I've moved away from the camera. Anyway, and uh, I'm going to shut this thing down and I'll let you know in the channel whether or not K3B still blows things away after I reboot this thing on the latest version of Fedora. There we go. See, I'm supposed to be over here. There we go. I'm supposed to be over here. Uh, oh, well, doesn't matter. <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye-bye.